I now call on the class valedictorian, Ms. Sophia Hassan Ali, Bachelor of Science Optometry, to deliver the valedictorian address. Chancellor, the University of the West Indies, Mr. Robert Bermudez. Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal, Open Campus, Dr. Luz Longsworth. Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal, St. Augustine Campus, Professor Brian Copeland. Deputy Campus Principal, the UE Cave Hill Campus, Professor Clive Landis. Pro Vice Chancellor, Graduate Studies and Research, Professor Dale Weber. Pro Vice Chancellor Planning, Professor Denzel Williams. Deputy Campus Principal, the UE St. Augustine Campus, Professor Indar Ramnarain. University Registrar, Mr. William Eitan. Campus Registrar, Mr. Richard Saunders. Campus Bursar, Mrs. Andrea Taylor Hanna. Campus Librarian, Mr. Frank Sudin. Public Orator, Professor Christine Carrington. Former Campus Principal and President, University of Belize, Professor Clement Sankat and Dr. Rohani Maharaj. Faculty Representative, Medical Sciences, the UE Alumni Association, Trinidad and Tobago Chapter, Dr. Irvinel Moore, deans and other members of senior management and staff of the UE St. Augustine Campus, President of the Guild of Students, Mr. Jonathan St. Louis Nahus and other members of the Guild of Students, members of the private and public sectors, executive management of other tertiary level institutions, members of the media and our specially invited guests, graduating class of 2017, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and assalamu alaikum. I greet you with the universal greeting of peace. Graduation ceremonies serve two purposes, to look back at what's accomplished and to look forward to what's to come. It is a pleasure and an absolute honor to address you all on this auspicious occasion. As your 2017 representative, I congratulate all of you on your achievements. We have earned the opportunity to be in this room today. And with that being said, how about a round of applause for us? It's been a journey, an adventure, a challenge, a learning experience, whatever you want to call it. It's been a long one. But we did it. We've sat through many lectures, survived never-ending clinic sessions, all-nighters of Googling case reports, cramming sessions where the information disappeared the second you look at the exam paper, and way too many KFC snack packs. Today is a momentous occasion for us all, but I must first and foremost salute my fellow optometrists and professors. The UE optometry program is a fairly new one to the University of the West Indies, only eight years old, with this being the fifth graduating class. I am the first optometry student to give this commencement speech, so please forgive us, the optometrists, if we gloat a little bit. It's kind of a big deal. A few years ago, after noticing that there was a great shortage of optometrists in the islands of the Caribbean, 2020 was declared as the year by which preventable blindness should be eradicated in the region. 
A proactive government here in Trinidad and Tobago worked with UWI to develop this optometry program and to address this declaration. I thank the Dean's Office and everyone who fought for this program and fought to make it what it is today. However, after five cohorts of graduates, our public health services and those of the other islands still have not employed one new optometrist to address the requests of the UN. It is time that our RHAs here and in the other islands address this sad situation. The international standards set by the professors and the methodologies of training have surpassed a lot of expectations, including my own. This field is much more than simply refracting and prescribing glasses. We are helping improve quality of life, mobility, and functionality. When sight is lost, sometimes the easiest and most mundane tasks become impossible. If you could see me up here, first thank God, and second, thank your optometrist. Optometrists, like pharmacists, physical therapists, and nurses, we are not doctors, but we work hard as primary health care providers, and I hope that my presence here today can encourage all of us to work together to benefit our patients and society as a whole. Vets and dentists and all of you other doctors, I know your struggles, but I implore you all to put aside egos, forget your wallets, because our country needs a more efficient and accessible healthcare system. Our country needs people who can encourage healthier lifestyles, not just treat diseases. The health of patients. The health of patients, of strangers, lies in our hands. Now this degree which we have just received should not be thought of as a reward, but rather a commitment and an obligation to go further and continue this lifelong process of learning. As we embark on this new journey, I hope my words can resonate within you. There are more hills and valleys ahead but it's the valleys that determine the heights of our peaks. Only experience will provide us with the practical skills which we now lack, but soon enough, we will have enough stories to have really learned. I would like to share a personal story with you. I can tell you about the hundreds of patients I've logged, but there's one in particular that has stuck with me and probably will for quite some time. An older woman came into our clinic for an eye examination. Ten years prior, she had been told that she was almost blind in the left eye and that her right eye wasn't far behind. Since then, she had become more and more depressed and her marriage was suffering. Her husband sat beside her longingly, desperate for help. He had tried everything possible to take care of her and it was hard to see what his wife had become. All of his efforts seemed to have been in vain. It was truly one of my most difficult exams because she doubted herself every step of the way. She did not want to identify letters on the chart because she was convinced she could not. And in the end, with the help of some training, new glasses and some aids, she was able to read the smallest newspaper print. She was in shock. One person many moons ago gave her a very dim diagnosis and psychologically she had given up on being an independent and functional woman. Tears of joy came to her eyes and it was amazing to witness how her husband consoled her. Her husband started to smile as he said, I can't even remember the last time you cried. She had stopped showing any emotion at home. And she replied, that's because you don't do anything to make me cry. 
Seeing that moment of tender love and happiness between the two absolutely moved me. It was a shame to see how such a successful woman had become so dejected as to give up on life. It was a reminder of how one person's health or how a simple diagnosis can affect an entire family. It's moments like these that remind us why we do this and why we love this thing called medicine. To me, I really hadn't done anything special that day, but the person who benefited the most was her husband, who was reunited with the love of his life. See, we don't perform miracles, but we try to improve quality of life. That is all we really can do. Today may be a life-altering day for us, but one day a visit to our office may be a life-altering day for someone else. People will look up to us needing answers. We are responsible for giving them knowledgeable counsel. We are now devoted to our patients' well-being, and while it may not be in our contracts, we must do it with a smile. We must be humble and kind. We must be attentive and meticulous with our every move, our every thought, and our every action. There's no more begging for extensions. We no longer answer to our professors. We answer to all of humanity. We should not just identify ourselves as medical professionals, but also as activists, peacemakers, ambassadors, innovators, philosophers, and artists. Forget Instagram likes or Facebook followers. Being in this room is enough proof that you have made someone out of yourself. Embrace it. We don't have to morph into something disingenuous for the sake of appeasing others. Stop giving apologies you don't owe. Take a seat at the table because you, each of you, have value to add to the conversations of society. The world needs what you bring to the table. You've worked hard for this knowledge and nobody can take that away from you. Stop doubting yourself. You've earned this and now it's time to start living. Look back at those who have inspired you and go forth and inspire others. This is the secret to happiness and true love and all that jazz. Now, early on in my academic career, I was given this advice, the five Ds. These are the only things you should let get in the way of your happiness and success. Death, disease, disaster, divorce, and disemployment. Remember that. As a Muslim, I believe that Allah, God, tests us in different ways. Life has a way of giving us hurdles when we least expect it, and most often when we're least prepared. During this course, our lives have been tested, far more than on paper or in the clinics. That doesn't mean we can't overcome. Some of my peers have lost family members, you can always retake a course, but you can never bring back a loved one. Your parents may be divorced, and you may have family members fighting very serious diseases. On the other hand, some of us are now married. Thank you, lovey. And there are even a few little ones amongst us. These, these are the things that make up our lives, the good and the bad. As I wrap up, so we can get some dinner, I must take a moment to say thank you. First, I thank the Almighty. We all pray in different forms, but I know that collectively, we know we wouldn't have made it here without some divine intervention. <laughs> Secondly, I honor those who have shared in the sacrifices, the struggles, and now the success. To our parents, grandparents, 
younger sisters who share their snacks and let us practice our skills on them, brothers, spouses, and all family members and friends who have been there from diapers to degrees. Thank you. Thank you for sharing in our dreams to our teachers and all of the support staff. We couldn't have made it here without you. And our achievements today are yours. Allow me to close with a fun fact. The eyes are the only part of the body where you can see someone's blood vessels and nerves without cutting. They truly are the windows to the soul. So open your eyes, embrace your strengths, harness your greatness, and watch your visions become a reality. To the UWI Faculty of Medical Sciences Class of 2017, we started from the bottom, now we're here. Congratulations, we did it! <laughs>